welcome to No Jacket Required. I am your host, Chris Pagnozzi. Today, I have Bobcat Goldthwait with me. Bob, thank you for, for coming. This is... Well, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> thank you. I'm a huge fan of yours. Oh, thanks. No, I've never seen the show, but... but I, <laughs> no one has. I'm sorry. Oh, well, you know. One Crazy Summer is one of my, my favorite films of all time. Joel Murray, who was just in the movie I made called God Bless America, uh, I met on One Crazy Summer. Oh. But he reminded me of something I didn't know. That Well, I did know, but I forgot. I guess Cusack had left his credit card out, so I wrote down the numbers, and then I started ordering things <laughs> to the hotel, like bamboo steamers <laughs> and thigh masters, yeah. whatever was on late night television. Yeah. Freedom Rock albums. That's, that was a lot of fun. Well, Cusack was like, aren't you guys getting free gifts? <laughs> So he thought all these nice things were being sent. You just mentioned your film God Bless America. I, I absolutely loved it. Oh, hey. um, it's so It's so good. I, I'm curious, was it something that um, came to you by frustration? It, a couple things were the germ of it. One was the actual show, My Super Sweet Sixteen. Oh, yeah. And I was in London there having a festival of the American version, and it really bothered me that that's what we were exporting to the rest of the world. I also wrote it as a Christmas present to my wife, because uh, she hates babies. So <laughs> I thought, I'm going to write a movie where I, spoiler alert, I shoot a baby at the beginning. I like to say it's a violent movie about kindness. We're only supporting these awful shows by watching them and saying, well, I only watch it because it's terrible. Yeah. I mean, I, I do it. I'm guilty of it. I was interested about why are we so distracted? You know, we, we do spend all of our time involved in shows like that yeah. or, or, and let them form their ideas for them. I guess it's a lot easier than actually thinking. Than <laughs> thinking for yourself. Yeah. Uh, no, the, no, you know, God Bless America just played the Deauville Film Festival and it was like, it was like 1,400 people, standing ovation. and awesome. World's Greatest Dad is probably my, my favorite comedy um, in the last 30 years. Oh, wow. I love it. Wow, it, thanks, man. Absolutely. Um, was Robin Williams always in mind? No, no. Yeah. He thought he was going to help me out and do a, a solid and play like yeah. a, a, a teacher, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, paging Mr. Herman, Mr. Pee Wee <laughs> Herman. Like, he thought he'd do a small part and it'd help get the movie financed. But he read the script and he was like, well, I'd like to be the guy, you know, Lance. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So, yeah, I mean, if I was going to write a movie for Robin, I would have stayed away from a poetry teacher. Robin was just uh, being a nice friend. And uh, I was worried when we were working together because I've known him since I was 19. Really? Yeah, yeah. I got nervous. I was like, is he going to listen to me on the set? And he's going to say, I have an Oscar and you are in Hot to Trot. I think we're <laughs> going to do it my way. But yeah. that wasn't the case at all. We really collaborated. and I like to be extremely anonymous in real life. I, I truly do. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of comics that uh, are on all the time or need to fill this attention yeah, it's hole in them. And, and I'm the direct opposite. I really consider it a good day when I go under the wire. I just shot a Bigfoot movie, and when I was out in the middle of the the woods, there's no planes going over. There's, I mean, no phone service. It was really, I couldn't have been happier. Yeah? Yeah, I was like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because... Mountain lions don't ask you about Police Academy. <laughs> you know what's weird about People will always tell me how tall they were when they saw Police Academy. Really? Dudes would, dude, uh, I, was, I was this big. Is that the one question you wish people would never ask you again? Well, it's not that. It's I know that's how people know me. Yeah. Here's the problem. It's hard for me to continually feign enthusiasm mm. when people bring that up yeah. when they meet me. That's the only, that's the only part. I feel bad, you know? Yeah. It's like, hey, you know Police Academy, when I was good. And I got up to go, yeah, fuck yeah. I don't know what my reaction is. I go, oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and really, when I say thank you, what I'm thinking about doing that is that I'm, I'm, I'm usually pretending I'm gutting myself and pulling my entrails out <laughs> while they continue to talk to me and ask me questions if the black guy really yeah. made those noises. <laughs> there goes my no. no, but seriously. Michael Wins. Did Michael Wins really make those noises? <laughs> I wonder if he's got to listen to questions about me. I wonder if that's the flip side. The people okay, going, like, is that guy really crazy? Is he got brain damage? Why does he talk like that? But when I directed the Kimmel show, and I, I did that, people don't know that, I did that for like three years. Yeah. And I did, I don't know, almost 300 episodes. But if I had a note, you know, and I'd be talking to Jimmy from the booth, I go, Jimmy, you go, do the voice. <laughs> He's like, I'm not gonna do the voice. 
uh, only if I really needed something for him to yeah. do. But but I didn't think people thought I was in the booth going, Ready, camera one! <laughs> you know, I've noticed that I don't sound like what you me right. anymore. I can't even do an impression of me. You, you haven't done it in so long. Oh, I'll dust it off, you know, for like uh, sick kids and... That's not true. <laughs> uh, you have you had a thing though. You had a thing. I had a hook. Like, oh, uh, no. I need a thing. You need a thing. I need a thing. No, because then you, no, you. Uh, I, that's my advice. Don't get a thing. Don't get then, a thing. No, because then you'll always be trying to get back to 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 you. Right. Now but, I've met Carol Channing, and I can say that this is the actual booth because it smells like her a little bit. <laughs> I mean, she's a delightful lady. It. I've never met her. Really? It's like. A <laughs> That's pure Channing. Let's get this pure Channing. That's pure, one hundred percent uncut oh, yeah. Channing. My my wife tried to get me a, a star on the Walk of Fame, as a surprise, and she called him up and she said, you know, uh, they go, well, who's this for? And they go, well, for Bobcat Goldthwait. And she, goes, oh, we don't deal with the, you know, posthumous, uh, the dead celebrities. That's another. Uh, she goes, he's not dead. He goes, why? She goes, it's my husband. Are you sure he's not dead? <laughs> <yet? laughs> <She's like, laughs> Pretty sure. Yeah, that I would like a sad. star. I would like a star. Absolutely. I mean, not that I think I warn it, but when you see, you know, Ryan Seacrest, you go, oh, yeah. please, you know. But then when you see a, a hobo, you know, urinating on it, it kind of takes it all, all the magic away anyways. I imagine there's better parts of Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for coming and doing this. Well, uh, thanks for having me on, and thanks thank for the kind words. It's nice yeah. too. I, I, I am very. I'm not that jaded when someone likes my movies. It does mean something to Love me. Love your movies, and I'm really looking forward to, uh, to your, your future movies. I just keep making them. Keep you making know? them. I sound like Dirk Diggler. He's always, <laughs> I'll keep rocking and rolling if you keep watching them. You know. Um, but it's nice to meet someone that watches my movies. <laughs> it doesn't happen a lot. Thank you. Uh,